Welcome back to another episode of Community Battlecast Primetime. I'm your host, Doom Tanker, so let's get right to the news, folks. GameReplays.org has posted an interview with James Hannigan, the award-winning composer of the musical scores for Kane's Wrath, Red Alert 3, CNC4, and other games and BBC shows. You can read up on the full article on the Game Replays official website. The Command & Conquer Wiki is working on a refit and revamp project to make room for the new titles that we got coming our way. Any and all fans can go to the wiki page and help out on this project. You can head on over to the EVA database now and lend a hand, or check out some of the fun stuff they got on the series, including info on some of the titles that never made it to us, and exclusive never-before-seen items, such as the RA-1 original storyboards, which make the Brotherhood of Nod more of an element to the Soviet storyline, and the CNC Bible, an attempt to create a definite guide to the CNC canon by the Westwood Studios team following the release of Tiberian Sun, a must-see for any fan of the series. GameReplays.org has also posted up a video on YouTube, which looks to be some sort of trailer for a soon launching gaming show that will be featuring RA3 along with other games. Hopefully more info about what the show is and what it will do will be revealed soon. You can find the teaser trailer for the show on YouTube. Doivid has posted up a follow up to his RA2 Splosion video called Uber Splosion, showing off one of the main reasons why CNC is so awesome, blowing stuff up. You can check out the video here on YouTube. A new episode of CNC Legos has just been posted up on YouTube earlier this month. You can check out the new episode on the CNC's NZ YouTube channel, as well as check out past episodes of this awesome series. And of course, we here at Community Battlecast Primetime are proud to announce the winners of the 2011 Forum Awards. But before we begin, we want to give a thanks to everyone who posted and made a difference on the thread and the outcome of this. Now let's get down to business. For the most helpful, we got New Guard. Least helpful? In a bag. Biggest troll? Kermanet. You mad bro? Biggest troublemaker? Maxim123. Most artistic? Kane Nash. Most annoying came up as a tie between Gist and Short Bus. Most dedicated was between Reddy and our own Nod Soldier Girl. Nicest members was also a tie up again between Noodle Socks and Nod Soldier Girl. Most entertaining? Philoida. Best community map maker goes to Real War. And best modders was too close to call so we just decided to give this all out to them all. Gunship Mark II, Raven, Synapse, Hensford, and Open Sketchbook and the rest of the Paradox team. And of course, the most anticipated fan project, Renegade X. Once again, thanks to everyone who participated in the voting and congratulations to the winners. Now it's time for the Mod Spotlight. We got another ton of mods coming our way, so let's get started. Let's start off with some Generals mods, since that's the next title we're looking for. Zero Hour Contra is one of the most insane and epic General mods I have ever played. With over 100 new units, 3 new Generals, and the AI difficulty cranked up to 11. This is an amazing mod for Zero Hour. 007 is currently available on their mod database page and 008 is on the way. You owe it to yourself to play this mod if you haven't yet. This one is for everyone who likes to find over which universe is better. The Tiberium, the Red Alert, or the Generals. CNC All-Stars brings together the best of all three universes into one big battle royale. Downloaded 20,000 times within the first two weeks of initial release, this is a must play for any fan of the series. CNC 3 A New Experience is an open source mod that adds in dynamic new camera angles and a UI to the game. It is also compatible with most other mods, one of which we'll get to next, and adds in new skirmish and multiplayer match, each added to add in weather effects and HD sky domes, as well as new music to the game. If you ever wanted to see the action from the ground without picking up a rifle or checking it out from almost a satellite point of view, this mod is definitely worth a download. Tiberium Essence, a mod for Tiberium War, brings back a lot of classic units from Tiberian Sun, as well as adds in some new ones to the fray. From the return of the Mammoth Mark II to the Cyborg Commandos to Hover MLRSs to Banshees, this mod adds a lot of tweaks to the classic Tib War units and adds new ones. If this mod isn't on your list to check out, you need to add it. The guys over at Tiberium Secrets have posted up an update just recently about how the colony faction for their mod works. It's a pretty interesting mechanics at work there. You can read up the full post on their mod database page. While this mod isn't released yet, it's still worth a look. The guys over at Blue Hell Productions have posted up a new dev blog featuring a preview of the Allied Light Tank for Red Alert, A Path Beyond. You can check out the blog post on the team's official website, and you can check out the mod itself on their mod database page. RA3 Community Patch 1.13 isn't really a mod, but I just, since it was created by the community, I decided to put it here. All this does is add some tweaks and some small changes to balance to the game and even game up even further after EI 
I stopped supporting it. You can snatch up this on the Mod Daddy Beast page. You can also find the list of tweaks on the official forums. And a leak from an unknown source has given us some kind of pixelated image of something from the guys on the RA Paradox team. There's no clue what this could mean for the mod, but it's definitely got us curious. You can check out the details on the mod on their database page. Greetings, comrades. This is the Battle Pass 3 yet again, and we have a stellar lineup for you this week. How do I know that, you ask? Because all of these replays were sent in to me via cyber.replays at gmail.com. Let's get into it with this GLA mirror on Alpine in the original Generals, no zero hour. This replay was sent in to me by Scotsman, and it features Pharaoh as the pink GLA on the top side versus Warsteiner as the Cyan GLA on the flip side. Pharaoh goes for some early map control by taking buildings in the center and by building a tunnel network right outside Warsteiner's base. Pharaoh sneaks in some technicals and is able to take out a barracks. Why doesn't Warsteiner defend? Because he's busy cleaning out Pharaoh's main base. Pharaoh can't defend against the attack, so he rebuilds at his expansion and sends in more technicals to take out the supply stack, and they manage to outrun Warsteiner's tanks. Pharaoh attacks again, takes out another barracks, reinforces with scorpions, and reforces Warsteiner to sell off his arm stealer, although he's already relocated to Pharaoh's old base. Throw takes out Warsteiner's expansion and sets up camp for himself. Warsteiner can't hold on and calls a full retreat. Game 2 brings us to a 2v2 in CNC3 Tiberium Wars, sent in by a name I can't pronounce. Alternator is the purple GDI in the top left, and their teammate is Sextan, the green nod in the bottom left. The right side is Hoompa Loompa as the blue GDI on the top, and Kuban as the pink screen on the bottom. The map is Red Zone Rampage. Loompa base creeps towards Alternator and techs up to Juggernauts, while Kuban gets Devastator warships. Alternator loads engineers into stealth day PCs and sneaks two into Lumpa's base and one NPC into Kuban's base. Alternator is able to capture a tech center and Lumpa's MCV as well as Kuban's drone platform. The drone platform falls, Alternator sells off the extra MCV, and the tech center gets recaptured by Lumpa, but not before Alternator throws down a sonic emitter. Venoms and stealth tanks from Stan make quick work of the Devastator warships and move on to clean up Lumpa's base. Stan's attack along with Alternator capturing Lumpa's base creep forces Lumpa to leave the game. Kuban has rebuilt their drone platform but Alternator and Stan have more stealth day PCs incoming. The target this time is the Scrin signal transmitter, which is captured and used to call in the mothership. The Catalyst Cannon fires, and Kuban tries to sew off enough buildings in time, but he misses one refinery, and the chain reaction is devastating. Kuban goes out with a bang. Today's final game takes us to Kane's Wrath, and not surprisingly, it is on tournament decision, and it features Brick with some numbers after his name, as the green GDI in the top right, versus Murska Sobata, the orange GDI in the bottom left. Brick gets some early flame tanks, and he uses the cloaking field stealth them. The tanks are spotted by Murska's pit bulls and Brick can't do any real damage. Murska gets orcas and uses them to fend off scorpion tank harassment. Brick gets a redeemer and marches into Murska's base while Murska tries to exploit Brick's defenses. The redeemer with the help of the two stealth flame tanks is able to force Murska out of the game. This game was courtesy of Brick. Now it's time for community fan art. Nod Soldier Girl and I have been scanning the web for some awesome artwork to show off to you guys. First one comes from Stealth Lazarus of Nod. Join up with the Brotherhood today. Kane wants you. Next up are some modified Warhammer 40k Terminators into GDI Zone Troopers. My Maltov Sniper. Some really awesome work there. Kimmy Real brings us this amazing Nod Soldier. Wanna add a Skrin ambush to your Yu-Gi-Oh game? Eurodan made this awesome Corruptor card to add to your custom collection. Next couple come from Adder24 featuring propaganda posters for both GDI and Nod. Feed a Nod avatar today and becoming the mammoth. Nimeth has posted a new update for his Cartoon and Conquer series. Some very funny stuff. Definitely worth a look. To follow up with the militia cosplay we had in the last episode, we got another great cosplay for you guys. Kane himself! This awesome photo was captured by Kitty Crisis. Lazul has brought us a sexy anime twist to the Nod Black Widow from CNC4 in this amazing piece. The next couple come from our very own Nod Soldier Girl. One is of a painting called Nod in Colors, and the other is a photo of one of her earlier artworks she did that actually made it into Apox Corner. Way to go! And last but not least, Goofy Cabal, who was actually the person playing the Kane cosplay in the picture earlier has made a handmade Nod ring for his cosplay. This is very awesome stuff here, guys. And that wraps it up for another installment of Community Battlecast Primetime. And as always, if you have fan art, news, or anything Command & Conquer related you want to share with the community, feel free to reach Nod Soldier Girl at her email, nodsoldiergirl at hotmail.com, and we'll see you guys on the battlefield.